I always find it fascinating to figure out how we got here because it's, I mean, you look at the world around us and it's like, how did we figure out that, you know, ones and zeros could become graphics on a computer? Like that was interesting to me. And so I, that's kind of what started me down the rabbit hole. At a young age, I kind of always enjoyed playing computer games. League of Legends was kind of like the drug of choice, I guess you could say. That was kind of what overtook me when I was like 10, when it came out, kind of been steady playing that ever since. And so I started being fascinated by the hardware. You know, everyone builds their own computer so they can get, you know, better at the game, get better graphics. I kind of liked programming, but I wasn't as into kind of the software development. I kind of was more interested in how it interacts with the hardware, and so that's kind of how I ended up going into computer engineering. I chose UVU because it's close to home. I kept my, my job, and so it was really easy with my scheduling, and then cost and the class size was, was important for me as well. I wanted to be able to interact with my professors um, in, in a more meaningful way. I mean, you, you always hear about the uh, the classes where you have you know hundreds of people and you know the professor doesn't really know you so that was kind of what I assumed college was like and then now that I'm you know been through most of my my college my undergraduate it's totally different you know the interactions I've had with my professors the one-on-one -on -one time the the projects I've been able to to join and work on has been leagues above what I anticipated Initially, um, I was in Dr. Shikaramas's class, uh, digital signal processing in the spring. He had a couple openings for the wind turbine project. And at first I, I was like, that sounds really cool and I wanna, I wanna be involved. I beat myself up and didn't apply because I didn't feel like I knew enough. Um, and I wouldn't be you know, a great enough asset. And so I kind of you know, piddled around and decided not to apply. And then fast forward a few months, he, he had another op opportunity for the fire project. And so I was like, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. And so I started working with um, him on that project. And then after we kind of wrapped that project up and was working on our publication, he offered me a position on the wind turbine project. And so I jumped on on board and started working on that as well. One of the other projects I ended up working on over the summer was investigating how we could use machine learning um, and deep learning to detect um, forest fires. We did some work on that and published a paper delving into how we could use autonomous detection to better our responses to forest fires. And that's something that affects Utah. And if we could reduce that, it would be amazing. The summer months where it's just like you can't see outside. And it's, so if we could reduce that, that'd be, have a, that would have a huge impact on the community. The big project that I'm a part of is funded by the uh, Utah System of Higher Education. It's under the Deep Technology Grant. And the funding number, I believe, is just shy of $1 million. And they started working on it in November of 2021, and it's slated to be finished by November 2024. And the grant money was for um, a fo developing a fully autonomous system utilizing drones and machine learning to investigate um, wind turbines to see, kind of do the fault diagnosis. So essentially the drone is pathland, so we have a pathlanding team that kind of figures out how to make the drone fly to the turbines and inspect it autonomously. And that's us utilizing a lot of cool technology within AI and deep learning. And then it'll take the images of the blades and then we're tasked with developing some machine learning, deep learning algorithms that can detect whether or not there's faults on them and, and kind of what kind of faults there are. And that's been a lot of fun and it's been a big challenge because I think we have something like 55 students, um, undergraduate students work on it. We've hired two PhD postdoctoral researchers as well in CS and mechanical engineering. And so it's, it's a huge project and there's a lot of cross-disciplinary work being done. There's mechanical engineers, CS students, electrical engineering students, so it's, it's been a lot of fun getting to know everybody and kind of working on a big, in a big team. I think there's, I, you know, AI has been kind of a buzzword um, with the release of like ChatGPT and all of these large language models, but AI has been a thing for a long time. It's just now, you know, we're hitting some breakthroughs as far as like neural networks um, in the past like 10 years. And that's kind of what it's accelerated, what we know and see today, but there's impacts across the community. I mean, it can be scary. I mean, you see like the sci-fi movies with like facial detection, and tracking and all those things. And ultimately, I think it comes down to who you're developing it for and, and kind of what's guiding your, your mission. Whereas we're trying to stop forest fires, we're trying to inspect turbines for faults. There's a lot of benefit in using machine learning. But yeah, it's definitely been something that's, that's a hot topic and, and probably deserves a lot more attention as far as the ethics go. Dr. Shikramas is great. He's been a great mentor to me. Helped me understand key aspects of machine learning and deep learning. Um, how they apply and, and ultimately given me the power to learn myself, gave me the, um, the confidence to 
to be sure of myself and, and what I know and what I can learn. So that's kind of been a huge, a huge asset for me is having that, that relationship with him and, and that mentorship has been amazing. UVU is a place for technology and student involvement at, at a much higher scale than a lot of people um, assume.